virtual tour of the Colorado Model Railroad Museum. We all know Bruce Kelly is on the membership and leadership of every model railroad of 100 miles in Oregon somewhere. But every committee that's east of that has Michelle's influence. Take it away. Okay, I know who wrote my intro. <laughs> That's so funny. Hi, I'm Michelle Kempema. I am the director of the Colorado Model Railroad Museum in Greater Colorado. And I thought I'd start with talking about how this museum came to be. This really was kind of the lifelong dream of Dave Tressel and his pictures here behind me. Um, Dave always had the dream to build the ultimate model railroad ever since he read Lynn Westcott's book, 101 Check Plans. And in there it said, if I had a million dollars, I could build the ultimate railroad. Well, Dave thought about that and made, I think, 14 plans, and this was plan number seven, and so he ended up building it here in Greeley. Then his grandkids all moved to Pennsylvania, and so did Dave. So he made this a nonprofit museum before he left, and that's where I come into the picture as the director. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we operate, and then take you around the layout, and then we'll have questions at the end. So make sure you ask your questions. So, and let's go this way and look at our dispatching center. So follow me. I'm actually going to trade camera with the uh, museum volunteer Randy. So hold on, bear with us. Okay, Randy. Hey, hey. <laughs> my name's Randy Palm. I'm one of the volunteers here at the museum. I've been with the museum since we actually started construction. I uh, wanted to show you our dispatch panel. This is a dispatch panel that mimics what a real dispatch panel would look like in the uh, 70s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, we actually purchased a couple dispatch panels from the, west, from the West Coast, but they didn't meet our configuration for what we needed. So we actually had to have this cabinet custom built for us, but all the hardware on the, the, the panel is authentic hardware from those two panels that we purchased. Okay. We keep our trains over here on the right. <laughs> those are standard museum trains. And then they're on a magnet you want to pick one of those up and then we can move them around the board so we can know where our trains are going <laughs> so they go up here so dispatch it's a little bit easier for them so we don't really use like the big paper plans uh, for dispatching so okay so this is one way we do our railroad and we do this on fridays and saturdays when we have 10 to 20 guys here yes and and we'll run trains on the layout everybody individually operating the other thing we do, especially on Sundays or in a pandemic, <laughs> is we run um, with docents. So I'm going to follow Randy over here, and he's going to explain how the trains are running today. And I'll give you a sneak little peek of the layout as we walk by. Michelle? Um, yes. If we could, could you, there are people asking if you could speak up, please. Are we too quiet? I wonder if we should mute our trains. Oh, we We're going to mute our trains, and we'll be a lot quieter. So... If the trains themselves will the background noise and I will talk louder. So it's, we're gonna go under some stairs. So I apologize for the bumpiness, but this is our duck under to our, our main control center. So this is your behind the scenes tour. <laughs> so in here is our control center and I'll let Randy talk about what we're doing here. So what we have here, here's the computers that we use to run the layout. Only one computer is actually running at a time. But this way, if I have a failure of a computer, I can switch to the other one real quickly and get the museum up and running because we are a public museum. This here shows you the screen. And like Michelle said, we, we run two different ways. One way we run is with a dispatcher and we have volunteers actually running the trains. Of course, we can't do that on uh, today. And then we have like Sundays where we don't have enough volunteers or special events. So this program is actually a docent program the program itself is actually running the entire layout. It's also running the trains. It's also running the dispatch panel. So you can run the entire layout with one person just watching the computer. And you can see here the, the trains, the green areas are where trains are cleared to go. So you can see this train's moving forward. Red areas is where the train has come from. We have uh, seven trains running right now. That's up here, it indicates the trains that are running. The, the uh, computer tracks where the trains are. Uh, it makes sure that there's safety protocols. So if it 
loses track of a train. It shuts, it stops all the trains. It also um, controls the passing of trains on sidings and main lines. Um, that's a lot of fun to run, to watch. And it also, when it runs the trains, I wanted the trains to look realistic. So they don't just start off and go. They actually slowly build up speed like it was a real train that was having to get that mass moving. And then when they come to a stop, they'd slow down slowly. So as the train goes along, it watches the signal in front of it. If it's a green signal, it goes green speed. If it's a yellow signal in front of it, the train slows down to yellow speed. Then if it sees a red signal, it slows down to red speed until it gets to about three feet from the signal, and then it slows to a complete stop. And that's how you space it out. And that's how the trains <laughs> run. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hand this back to you, and I'm going to look around the office here, so we're going to give them a tree behind the scenes. Sorry about the handing off, but it, we thought Randy's the expert. And by the way, he custom wrote that program. So uh, if you have questions, you have to ask Randy, not me. <laughs> um, over here, this station here is where we do all of our rolling stock work. Uh, we have some track over here to work with and then all of our standardized stuff. We do run heavier than NMRE standards. Is that right, Randy? Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is that workstation. And then um, over here, I actually went and got the key. So you can see these are our... Uh, just back stock of locomotives <laughs> in our locomotive cabinet. So these are just, if we need something quick, you can run it, you can come in here and you know these are ready to run. And we've got them, you know, sound, non-sound, um, consist together, so we're good there. And then I don't have this one open, we have another cabinet of them too. And then over here is our, this is our station where everything is programmed, it's our locomotives desk. Not much action here right now, but a lot of times there's locomotives all over this desk. <laughs> so that's kind of where that's at. Okay, so we're going to do some stairs again real quick. <laughs> Sorry. We were really smart, and Randy actually programmed that mute button into our railroad so that you can actually hear me when we're on a tour. So we're going to start here at the edge. This is where our staging yard comes out, and this is the first part of the layout. So we're coming into Lakeview from the uh, Fairport siding. So this is an area called Nasty Flats. And I love this area. There's boats in here. And uh, this is our, it's a logging railroad. So our railroad is the Oregon, California and Eastern Railroad. And um, the year is 1975. So you're gonna see the tugs and you're gonna see the little tiny, what's the name of this one, Randy? I know there's a word for it. Uh, Broncos. Broncos. Mm -hmm. um, Randy's brother, Steve, is kind of our guru on making tugboats and scenery. So here is our, one of our log yards. We also have the lift bridge that you guys had to work on so that we could do double stack containers, didn't you? Yes, we wanted to run double stacks and we found out real quickly that they wouldn't fit under the bridge. So we actually had to fix the concrete back here at the back and raise the bottom of the concrete up a little bit so the cars would clear it. Yeah, because we had some volunteers who really wanted to run their double, double stack trains. So um, come over here into the lake view. This is our first town that you'll see. And here's where I'm going to tell you a little more story about Dave Trussell. Dave was a newspaper publisher. He actually was a, he did the um, newspaper for the army in Vietnam. So he was uh, a writer for them. When he uh, left the army, he bought the Lake County Examiner and we actually have it here in the layout. And it's here in this town. Where did we put it? <laughs> we just redid it. So it's in here and then it's right here by the theater. And I don't know if you can see that right there. That's his actual first newspaper. So Dave actually kind of built what he watched his first years of being married and raising his family. Um, this movie theater is a standard kit from, I think, Woodland Scenics. Um, or Walters, I'm not sure. I think it's a Woodland Scenics one. And uh, we actually customized it to 1975. You probably can't see it, but the movies, we actually looked them up. And in the fall of the summer and fall of 75, you saw Jaws. And the Return of the Pink Panther and what we're currently showing is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And those are correct to the time <laughs> for typical movies. So here's downtown Lakeview. And we have to go around the stairs a bit to get to the other side. Oh, it kind of needs to be rebushed. So in this side, we have a really cool scene. This is one of my favorite scenes that Steve put together here. 
Let me make sure the trains are running. So um, here you can see there's like a whole bunch of workers. And I really like this scene because it shows the reality. Although I think we have more workers working than you sometimes see, Steve. <laughs> um, here we have our big boy on display like towns do when they put their their locomotives on display. And so uh, we have the 4020 here. We know that we don't actually have that in Oregon, but that's just some fun that we have. Um, and then we're going to go this way into our Lakeview Ag Center. And then on around into here. This over here is our second sawmill. So we head this way. Um, we should talk about backdrops really quick here too. Um, our backdrop is a photograph that has been painted over to make it fall. The artist who actually painted the rest of the backdrops painted over the photograph too. Um, so you can see that the trees are actually fall and will match her painting in other places. I thought that was a really neat touch. And over here we have a sawmill and this is where you would come and pick up some lumber. And we have trains that actually work these yards and come and get the product they need to get and take it out to our ship where we will export this product. So this one's the, called the Fremont Sawmill and it's basically in two parts. It's a pretty big operation here. Lots and lots of detail. <laughs> Don't go too, too fast. Hopefully we're, I think we're moving okay for you all. And you're pretty good at moving there. <laughs> I don't have the camera, so it's not going too fast. <laughs> so, um, just little scenes everywhere. I love the detail in here. We have a, a home here. And a little picnic area where the guys are having a picnic and just all kinds of stuff going on. Just little things. Um, we should talk about power lines here too. <laughs> so we had power, what was the original product of power line? That we used. That we used. Easy line. We, we, used, used. we used, do we use that now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because our power lines, what happens is our plexiglass is so short. Um, I don't know if you can back up and show them how short the plexiglass is here. So the plexiglass is, is very, very short. Let me see. It's like <laughs> this high. So the public can lean in. And the point is to have an immersive experience here in modeling. But also what happens is we have guests who sometimes don't have the best vision. And they'll be like, look at that over there. I don't know if you can see. I'm totally bouncing our power lines up and down. Uh, <laughs> so we ended up going with this product and power lines because we were replacing them all the time. <laughs> so that was something that I learned early on. Over here is our, uh, one of our yard, one, what do you call this engine house? One of, the, one of the engine facilities, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and so in here, we have all kinds of stuff getting ready to roll. Um, my favorite car is in here because it has my graffiti name on it over here on this side. <laughs> so uh, as we go around, we're going to head around to the West Lake View. And one thing we've had people say that we need more graffiti. This is 1975, so there wouldn't have been a lot of graffiti in this era. Uh, we have some because we know some artists that are graffiti artists. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why we have it. So over here, we start a whole lot of yard. In this yard here, we have a volunteer who likes to build his train in this yard. <laughs> So every Saturday, if you come visit, you'll probably find Carl over here building his train that he's going to run around. And then he'll come back with some different cars because he switched them out around the layout and dropped some different ones back. So that's what this area is, is just a big yard. And then we're going to head over here into West Lakeview. And here comes a, a train. Now we do have our stuff muted so you can hear us. Our, our locomotives are set a little extra loud than I think you would on a home layout because we have people talking. The public is in here. So here goes one of our trains. This one is actually hauling some custom cab over semis. Those are a local company. That, those are what they look like in 1975. So that's a little touch of not Oregon in Greeley, Colorado. <laughs> so um, we'll head over here. So here's the switching engines we use in these yards. We have some Great Northerns. And over here we have a Southern Pacific set that Randy walked around there. And then um, if you want to go up real quick, our upper deck right here 
comes out of a tunnel and starts another set of upper deck here. So we have two layers um, going all the time. So that was one of our big boy trains on docent. Uh, let me explain our trains to you. <laughs> when we do dispatching and full operations, we have uh, 14 trains for the Oregon, California and Eastern Railroad. And we'll get around to staging and I'll show you those. And they're set up for the right location time era. They're prototypically correct. So we started with that when we opened as a museum. And then the public came in and said, where's the steam locomotive? I want to see the passenger train I rode on as a kid. And we slowly over time realized that the public doesn't care that the oc &E runs very specific trains. They want to see what they know. And so when we run docent, we tend to put all eras and all kinds of trains. So you're going to see a lot of different stuff today. I think we actually have two steam out. I know we have a cattle train. We can't mute those cars, those Broadway limited cars. So you're going to hear the cows, the chickens and all of that going. And so, yeah, so you see that. And then our volunteers, after they get 200 hours, can bring their own train. And so that's very fun for us. We'll have passenger train day and all the volunteers bring all their passenger trains. And it's really fun to see what they have. So that's a little explanation about that. Do Wes like you? This is a lumber uh, materials store where you can come and purchase lumber. And we have a few fun little details here. We have the welder. And then we have uh, one of my favorites. We, we just put these chickens in. I don't know if you can see them. They're kind of hard to see. Do we need to go this way? We're just going to view. Yeah, so here's our lime company over here. This is the Erie Lime. It's a pretty large facility. And there's going to spin around. Yeah, and so here we have a place where we would duck under and go to our staging yard. Sorry, I left stuff out from filming the other day. Uh, but down these stairs you would end up in our staging yard and when you go this way you see our mountain this is Gearheart mountain it's 1052 scale feet high <laughs> um, we think it's one of the one of the tallest in modeling and um, it has i think it's a half a ton of plaster. half a ton of uh, hydrocalc yeah and five percent real rock on top of that i know dave uses like seven to ten colors on it uh, he made his own molds. So one thing that's interesting about this mountain and all the rock in this museum is that Dave had a piece of coal. It's about this big. And because across the tracks from us is Kaiser Coal Company. So we can actually go get a lump of coal over there. And he would carve a surface, pour the mold, and then carve a new surface and more molds. And then it ended up about this big. And so all of our rocks were made exactly the way Dave wanted them to look. And so then he moved his mold and then carved it all together. Uh, he does say that uh, this... It's Gearheart Mountain in Oregon, but it looks like Colorado, <laughs> Englandwood Canyon, because that's what he wanted it to look like. <laughs> so it's your layout, right? You can do what you want. So we're going to head over this way. Um, here we've got three layers of rail. We've got track here, here, and up higher. We also, we don't have it running today, but there is a road here. We have logging trucks that run on the follow car system. So you'll see logging trucks running up and down the mountain. We head up this way. It's so weird without the sound on the local yes. <laughs> I keep thinking they're not I moving. I know, it's so strange, but I don't think you can hear us talking. So we'll head up here to Sycan. This is another one of our towns. Do we want to tell them how big the layout is? Oh, yeah. Would you like a little detail about the layout? Um, we're about a fourth of the way around the lower level right now. It's 5,500 square feet in a 10,000 square foot building. And... There are 28,000 trees, and I heard someone talking about having to build 900 trees, and they thought that was daunting. Can you imagine 28,000? It took Dave five years to get that done. <laughs> Every tree in here is handmade. Um, the aspens take the longest, obviously, because you have to paint the, the base of them. So this is where we actually have a little steam on the layout. And Dave, in his mind, he always said, you know, well, there's just a little bit of steam still working up in the mountains. So that's what we have here. We have our roundhouse, our turntable, and the town of Saikian. How we doing all the time? <laughs> Sorry, we're going kind of fast because we have to get all the way around. <laughs> you think they can hear that? I don't know. Oh, no. Okay, if you guys can hear the voice behind me, that is our defect detector. <laughs> So we have a defect detector on this layout and we can set it to randomly throw or we can leave it alone and not have hassle on the railroad. <laughs> um, that's a Boulder Creek engineering product, I think. 
Yes. And it's pretty fun. It gives our visitors an idea. It does really count our axles and how long our train length is and what its speed is. So that's pretty fun. This is a favorite here. I'm going to go ahead and push the big red button. It says push me. Randy, why don't you tell us a little bit about how this works? So this is our forest fire scene. Um, Michelle just pushed the button, which activated it. You can see that the orange lights have started. It is also, we have some smoke machines underneath the layout. And when we first developed, this was one of the first animations we put in the layout. We thought, well, smoke will just naturally go up tubes. So we just put tubes underneath the layout. Well, the smoke wouldn't go up the tubes. It just kind of hung out underneath the layout. So we actually had to put fish aquarium air pumps underneath the, the tubes to push air up the tubes, which then brings the smoke up through the tubes. And you can see it gets, it's funny because the smoke this time is, yeah, you know, the smoke right now is just kind of, usually it goes up more. It's because we don't have the air conditioner or the heater on. <laughs> no, or the heater on, yes. So the smoke is rolling down the hill. But it looks kind of cool because the guys are like in the forest fire right there. <laughs> it's a real cloud, cl uh, crowd pleaser. Kids love to watch this. And here we have a big boy right here. Nope. Show that. Here's Let's our big boy coming by. Tunnel. It's weird with no sound. Sorry, guys. <laughs> they sneak up on you when they don't have the sound on. Over to the dog lake. So, you, do you want to kind of give them an overview? We're in the middle of the layout right now. So, um, on the other side of this peninsula that we're in is another peninsula with two sides of, of scenery, also. And so, over here we have dog lake. And since this is a behind the scenes tour, I'm going to tell you a little story here, too. <laughs> uh, Dave actually, his grandfather's name was Gus Dobbins. So, he decided the owner of this railroad was Gus Dobbins. And this is his weekend home. And over, way over there on the other side is his actual office. And so sometimes our volunteers will bring his private cars up here so he can spend the weekend at his home. <laughs> so little things that we do around here. There's actually stories in every scene too, but I don't think we have time to go into that. But this is Dog Lake, it's here in the middle. And here I'm gonna give you a freebie. When you come to visit, you know, we have a lot of families and kids, and so they have an ice spy game, and we've always hid dinosaurs. And so this is your free dinosaur if you can find it in this scene. <laughs> Over here we have Lucky Blast Mine. Um, this mine is uh, something we're thinking about making push button operated sometime in the future. That might be one of the next things we work on. But it's a beautiful mine. Um, I think this one came off his traveling layout, right? Yes, this came off. We used to have a... Uh module layout that we'd take to shows all over America. And we took some of the buildings from that module layout and put them on this layout. Um, I love this scene right here with the rock because you can really kind of see the tunnels and everything. Uh, this is the most touched rock in the building. The, pub the public likes to touch it here. So that's okay. It lets them see what it feels like. Let's go on around this side. Here we have a logging camp. Um, and so our logging camp is actually on rail like it would have been. I don't know if you can see the detail in there. We have a shea. And this is this set of track up here and over where I said we had that steam and can, there's an upper level of track that just runs back and forth around this U-shaped peninsula to connect these two. So this little logging operation is kind of like stepping back in time a little bit. And so um, it can be operated independently from the rest of the layout. This way. How are you doing on five? Oh, we got a cruise. <laughs> We're going. Um, as we go down this way, you're going to see we have Warehouser on that side, and we have the cattle train rolling into Warehouser. We'll just walk over there, and then we'll get them there that way. Just save some time. So uh, here we play with mirrors a little bit. I don't know if you, our scene looks rather large here, but that's because there's a mirror background. And this is the loud train with all the uh, all the animals. <laughs> But our visitors love it. And a lot of people ask us, you know, what kind of club are we? But we're not a club. We're actually a museum. We have a mission statement to educate, inspire, and bring joy to all ages. So we are about bringing back those memories <laughs> and farm animals <laughs> to families to bring them some joy. Uh, here we have a little hobo camp because you have to have a hobo camp, right? <laughs> and there's a little working fire. I don't know if you can zoom and get close to that. And here we 
have some of the empty log cars. We actually have a train that you kind of build with the logs up on top of the mountain, and then you come down here and you empty them, and then they go off to the sawmills. So we have a lot of log operations going on in quite a few places around the way out. And that'll go up here to Okay, so this is Derry, and also called the loops for us because this is our helix. Uh, trains go through here, but twice. So it comes through once in the lower level, which is like twice through this lower level tunnels. It goes out that peninsula, back up here through the upper level. So that train is coming down from our summit at Quartz Mountain, and he's going to come across this high bridge. So I think we'll just kind of hang out here in rail fan for a minute <laughs> and watch the Zephyr go by. <laughs> and you might want to see the town. Here it comes. Oh. A beautiful Rio Grande. I think we'll go up to the snowshed. And then we can show our different staging area, and then I'll come right back out and go to the time class. <laughs> okay, how are we doing our time? Okay, so now I'm going to head up into an area that's behind the scenes. It's not wide enough for the public. And we have a staging yard on the floor down here. This is the yard that runs our computer train that are running today. The computer pulls from this yard and parks them back in this yard. And we have some spares that are not running right now in here, too. Um, that was an addition later because Dave thought he built enough staging, but can you ever build enough staging? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> we had to build more. We put it in the layout. So here's another log team. And we're loading. This is a loadout. This is our second loadout. So we're putting them on onto the rail cars up here. Let's see. And I just wanted to show the snow shed down here. It's really fun. So this is kind of the summit. Uh, so kind of narrow in here. But this is where we build the log train. It gets built here. And so what happens is we have our through trains going by. The log train has to pull out and it's, it's operations. And so the log train holds stuff up and messes with the dispatcher. And sometimes it gets a little crazy up here. But it's just fun, right? <laughs> and then this is the snow shed. 1,700 pieces of wood that they put together. What I found was interesting is that I found a photo of the snowshed without the mountain. He actually built the snowshed first when he was building this layout, and then he built the mountain over it. So here comes a train into the staging yard. Kind of a loss. Should we show them underneath what that looks like? I can turn the light on. No, I think we're okay. good. We're good. Okay. I'll show them the snow sh snowshed. And then we'll kind of quickly head back. Or maybe we should go through staging here. Anyway, we could. If you want to just that. go. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're changing our mind on our plan because we're short on time. So we're actually going to cut through underneath the layout and go through staging first and then show you the last part of the layout. So come this way. Can you flip the light on one more? Yep. <clears throat> Welcome to Under the Mountain. <laughs> they told me once this was going to be my office because there's actually room for a desk here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we do have those like handrails if you want to come under there. This place is very accessible. You can kind of see underneath. Here's some of our wiring. And um, this is the squeeze skinny part because we put the layout in here. <laughs> and then we got a duck down the stairs. So you can uh, see the main yard here. And of course, we have a train going by. <laughs> oh, a real train. Oh, a real train. <laughs> okay. I'll help you come through here. I I'm got sorry, it. we didn't plan to go this way. <laughs> Um, my original plan is that when the UP main line between Cheyenne and Denver is right outside our building, I was going to go rail fan and we were going to run outside and watch a train, but we knew there'd be no time for that. But that's what we really do around here. So now we're in main staging, and you can see that the, the computer train yard goes off the wall to the back side, and then on this side is the first original staging yard. There are seven trains here. And seven trains down there that go that way. All 14 can be on the layout at any given time with zero problems. And so the back wall is out of time. So we have the, uh, the which one is that? <laughs> I just forgot to see. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> the city of Portland. The city of Portland. There we go. 
back there, and then we have our trains here. And our trains run probably between 70 to 100 cars. Yeah, and we did a count on cars on the layout <laughs> and locomotives that we have, and I think we were a little over 3,000 cars last time we counted, and I think we're pushing 400 locomotives now <laughs> in the building. Um, there's the freedom train. That's a fun one. Another thing that we do is sometimes our volunteers are new to modeling and they want to run their own train. So what do you buy first? Of course you buy a locomotive <laughs> and then you need a train. So we have drawers down here that are full of trains. So you can build an entire train out of these nice deep drawers that we have. So all of these drawers are, are a train. So that's just kind of, I should put that kind of, kind of fun. <laughs> um, we run a fast clock. You can see up here, it's actually somewhat close to the right time. I think it's 12.20 here right now in real life, but we usually have it set to a one to four ratio and we run a six hour day. So we do 24 hours in the six hours that we're open to the public. And we have our, bit, our flap open here so you can kind of see some of our wiring. They don't want to see our wiring. Oh, uh, <laughs> they do their modelers. <laughs> it's the public that's like, oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> and so now we're coming into our second staging yard. Yeah. So. This side goes to the, what we call the West, that side went East. So here we have the 2018 Cheyenne Frontier Day stream that stopped here at the museum in 2018. It's on the back wall. And that one, we had to custom build a lot of those cars. <laughs> and so it's, it's very nice. Um, it runs with the 844 and we have the 1943 on it. And we also have mixed into our stuff is our Oregon, California and Eastern box cars. We have those. Uh, back here, I usually talk to people about weathering, but you guys know all about weathering. <laughs> so, our year's 1975, so the older cars are dirtier, 1975 cars are cleaner. And um, we have the modern Amtrak on the back wall there. And then we'll have this way. Uh, this is the glowworm in the back. I don't know if you can like see it. Maybe you can hear it, you can see how long this is. Usually it runs a little over 100 cars, 110. So it takes all six locomotives. They're all powered, all working to get them up our hill. So let's go around this way. It's a little bit darker out here. Um, yeah. No. Okay. Um, so they would go to state. They would go to these trains go out into the layout this way, but we actually have an area with this drop-down bridge right here, like that. And now I can take a train out. To Coos Bay. So let's go look at Coos Bay, Oregon. It's this way. So this is our uh, shipyard. And here we have a little bit of local, and then we start our shipyard here. The import products, the export products. Um, it's really fun when we do our education programs with fourth graders. We talk about how did your t shirt get to Walmart and how many times was it on rail versus truck. Um, that's kind of fun. And here it is. This is where we export our lumber. So I'm going to come around so you can show them the ship. The ship was scratch built by Dick Marshall. Um, they do float in water. They're complete models, um, fully functional. And this actually came off of Dave's traveling layout. He traveled with this ship and the Aquina Bay over here. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> they're, they're brass. And anything else you want to say about those? Well, like Michelle said, these were handmade by Dick Marshall. He was actually uh, in the British military during World War II, and he built all the ships that he served on, and he hand-built all these ships. And they are RC ships that you go out on the lakes. They light up like this one lights up. They smoke. Uh, the military ships play anchors away, and the whoop-whoop sound. <laughs> and they leave a nice fill of oil on the water. <laughs> and <they> leave, yeah. <laughs> and then behind you, we have the one that was given to us by his family. And Dick Marshall actually served on the Norfolk. And so that's how we, he passed away a few years ago. And this is how we honor him here at the museum. Yep. And the, the Norfolk was, of course, one of the ships involved in tracking down and sinking the Bismarck. <laughs> if I can do this without falling over. <clears throat> and here we have another ship. Um, over here we have a kit that Dave bought. I think there's about 20 of these made. I'm not sure the manufacturer, but this is the Edmund Fitzgerald. Also 1975, first story. And we all know the song by Gordon Lightfoot. 
and how the night that Fitz went down, um, it was headed for Whitefish Bay. And I'm going to tell you a little behind the scenes story that the public doesn't get to hear. So they built this model. He built it on this model, and it rolled out. And so he would take it out and go to Rotary, oh, Lion Clubs, um, you know, just different civic organizations. And he would tell the story. And he actually, Dave is like six feet tall and can sing. And so he would sing the song and tell the story of all the crew. And when I started here in 2011, in January, Dave came back from something. And he said, you know, Michelle, I'm never taking her out again. She's not going to sail in anymore. And I went, why, Dave? It's such a great story. And he said, no, I'm going to learn some history. He said, you know the story that when it sail on its fateful day, there was a work order for one thing. And that was a crack in hold number seven. And he said, come look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on that day, I'm going to get close. The crack was about this big. And since 2011, it went down the ship, through the bottom, up the back, and across the top. And we've just left it. <laughs> We're going to learn some history. And there's our little Twilight Zone story for the museum. <laughs> and let's see. Sure the yeah. Behind us is here, we have a canoe. This is Colorado M7 10583. She was built in 1919. So she turned 100 last July. So we gave her new paint and carpet. And she's a beautiful piece. You can walk through and become business. And we also tell you how they worked and why we had them and what a pupil is for. <laughs> so let's go over here and look at Klamath Falls. This is another fun city scene that we have. Here we have a scrapyard because everybody needs a scrapyard. I'm pretty sure this is scrap from building the layout in the scrapyard. <laughs> In this city, we use mirrors a lot. And as you can see, when you go through the street, you'll see that the mirror makes it appear that the city goes uphill. And then on this side over here, I'm gonna push the button so we'll have a little, another little interactive scene here. This is the fireworks factory and someone has uh, dropped something on fire. And so the roof was blown off and the fire department showed up and it's, on, it's gonna be on fire here in a second. So some fun things in this town are that we run faller trucks, which we don't have running today, but when I mean, we have volunteers here to do it, the trucks run through the city, they stop at these stoplights. The whole signaling system is wired in. Um, the, the entire city block here is independent and can lift and rotate. So we can put all four corners of this city block to the front. So when you come here, it looks a little different usually. Now we're getting it. It's another fire feature similar to our other one. And here's another behind the scenes story for you. You can see where the roof was. Dave actually had that roof and he had like kind of melted it a little bit and weathered it and it looked really bad and it was sitting on his desk. And he went home over the weekend and the cleaning lady came in and she thought it was trash and she threw it away. <laughs> and he didn't realize till it was too far gone. So he was going to kind of have it down here, but I guess it looked so mangled that she just thought it was trash. <laughs> oh, no <rough. laughs> Okay, so over here we have our Klamath Falls yard. Here's a doodle bug. We do run doodle bugs on our layout. We did run them in Oregon. That's kind of a fun piece. And Randy, I'm going to let you explain this yard here. This is a really nice yard. Yeah, this is another one of our engine uh, maintenance facilities. This is our primary maintenance facility. The uh, green locomotives here, these are our frogs. And you hopefully I'll be able to get a view of it. Uh, one of our volunteers actually custom made the uh, oh, okay, the slug unit for us with the flashers. Those are the units that uh, go up to do the logging run where they go up and get the full logging cars, take empty cars up the mountain and bring the full cars down the mountain. Um, we've got the blue OC&E engines there. Yep, and those we had custom made for us by Intermountain. And then now we go into kind of our warehouse and industry district where a lot of our trains will transfer and, and uh, switch out to this industry. I'm just going to let Randy walk down it. Oh, we have a fun piece on here. <laughs> just for fun, um, the museum is actually a member of NARCOA and we have our own speeder and one of our volunteers who actually works on our speeder built a little model of it. You'll probably have to go to this side to see the front. So that's our little maintenance of way. He's a MW01 and uh, we have him in real life out in the warehouse. So <laughs> kind of a fun thing we have on the layout. 
Looks like he's headed somewhere on a truck right now. And some more of our yard. Down here, we also run faller cars back on this road. We'll have trucks running down through here. And when the school bus stops and comes out, they will stop for it. So that's kind of a fun little feature we have. Um, see if I'm just here. And then this is our biggest yard. This is Klamath Falls Yard. You can see there's enough track here to do switching. Here we have, we have six plus the main. And then this lower rail, which kind of goes down and underneath down here at the headquarters. Hey, Michelle. It's Gordy. Yes. I don't want to, I really don't want to cut you off because this is great, but like the amount of questions I've got here is something ridiculous. And uh, oh, I really want to just get you, can I just get you on camera and ask you some of these questions? Because there's a huge amount of questions. Yeah, let's do it. And actually it's perfect because we're back around to the warehouse. We made it. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Awesome. And uh, just so everybody knows, my daughter Annabelle is uh, running around. <laughs> Uh, all over the place at the moment. So if you hear screeching, it's Annabelle. She might jump up on my lap and uh, and come and say hello. She's actually running around with a Colorado Railroad Museum teddy at the moment. <laughs> so she's doing pretty well. Come in, come and say hello. No, okay, right. Well, ask the first question then. So Brooks asks, um, how are you controlling the fire uh, uh, stroke lighting effect on the forest fire scene? What is it that you use to control that? I did all use Arduinos um, as a baby. And then, and I think the actual lights are uh, by Evans Designs. Evans Design lights on an Arduino, and they're custom built by Daryl Ellis, a volunteer. And he's upgraded them over the years. He's coming in and saying, oh my God, I got better men. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Evans Designs has some really good fire effects and lights. That they, we've used a lot of their stuff. Yeah, and they're just 30 miles from us. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, next question was from James. He says, how do you access the snow shed in case of a derailment? Amazingly, I don't think we've had a single derailment inside the snow shed. <laughs> yeah, you can reach in through the little holes, but so far we haven't had to do anything in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Sorry, Annabelle just said hello. Um, okay, it's a family show. Um, what brand of locomotives do you use, and do you have a, med a maintenance schedule? Um, brand wise, we have everything. Um, what do you What do you think, Randy? Yeah, we've got uh, pretty much everything. Got a lot of Athrens, uh, Proto two thousand. Um, stuff like that. Um, we've got some inner mountains. Um, we and we some scale train tunnel motor. Um, yep, scale trains. Yeah. Um, and the maintenance schedule we do have a regular maintenance schedule for all the locomotives. Uh, we keep a notebook with every locomotive's got a page in the notebook that records the history of the maintenance so we can find any, uh, you know, hanger queens, uh, if you will, and when trains are getting too old. Uh, we do a regular uh, lubing of them, cleaning them up. Um, and every Monday we have a period that cleans, and they'll go through the stages. So. Michelle, can you come a bit closer to the camera so we can hear you? There you go, you're oh. a bit far away. Oh, that's amazing. That's so much better. Um, okay, uh, Randy says, uh, well, Randy asks, do you, uh, do you do op sessions at the museum? Every Friday and Saturday. There you go. <laughs> um, um, we do special things too, but yeah, we we do operate with a dispatcher every Friday and Saturday. It's an off session, really, and it's never cool. twice. We don't ever run the same thing twice. So there's one going by right here. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Um, and then uh, Ralph asks, "What do you use to control your turnouts?" That's a Randy. Uh, turnouts are done with uh, tortoise motors. And then they're okay. um, it's all tied into the uh, CMRI system uh, designed by Bruce Chubbs. Awesome. Okay. David, <laughs> sorry for the noise. <laughs> it's all chaos in here right now. Um, David asks, um, do you use volunteers or paid employees to build and maintain the layout? All volunteers. 
we have five ladies employed here and that's work on the layout. <laughs> so sure. all volunteers. The volunteers in the last 10 years have put in almost 300,000 volunteer hours. Amazing. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. It's almost as many minutes as they've watched our uh, streams so far. Um, uh, okay. Are all of your locomotives and freight cars clean or are they weathered? And do you know how many of roughly what percentage of them are weathered? Um, typically on the layout, we're weathered. Uh, we like it to look weathered, prototypical. Um, we have a train that runs, yeah, now it's on the wall, that has a car for every volunteer that reached 3,000 hours. And we had a huge debate because, you know, there's a big debate among modelers about this. Do you weather it or do you down? So we let them choose. So we have a train that's kind of funny looking because it's like beautiful bright car, beautiful weathered car. <laughs> um, but we're typically weathered on the way out, yes. Um... And the the models of the uh, of the ships are those. Uh, someone's asking what scale are those models? They're HO scale. <laughs> they're all HO yeah, scale. Yeah, for the most part, they're for the most part they're HO. There's a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. Uh, Dick Marshall, you know, he handmade all of that. Awesome. Yeah. So they're not exact, but the Edmund Fitzgerald is definitely HO scale. Even the craft is HO still. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to have a look to see if we've got any more questions uh, that have just sneaked in. I didn't I'm sure answer that it. there's still more more questions yeah. yet. Go on. Sorry. I was just going to say we use about 18 NCE throttles every day here. Wow. That was part of the uh, answer to the other question. <laughs> so, okay, go ahead. Uh, so there's two more questions to go that have come in. Um, how much heavier than NMRA's standard weight? I'm guessing this is your freight cars. How he how much more overweight do you make them? It's it's not an exact amount. We're just on the high scale of the standards and a little bit more. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Yeah. And of course, all our cars have metal wheels, uh, metal couplers, um, a resistor, one resistor on uh, every car. But for occupancy detection. Um, but yeah, okay. we don't have an exact amount. Okay. Um, question from Thomas. Uh, what? I think we answered this. What company made the defect detector? Did we miss that? Is it Boulder Creek? I think it's Boulder Creek. Boulder Creek. And yeah. then they just made our odometer that we, we checked from our cell phone, which is super fun. That, that train with the cell cars on it. We put an odometer on one of those cars so we know how many miles it runs in miles time. And you, every time we're in here, we just open our cell phone and we can see. It's kind of fun. That's, <laughs> so. that's also handy. Uh, one of our locomotive maintenance guys figured out he could put that car behind the locomotive and speed curve it uh, using that car because it's that accurate on how fast it's going. Wow. <laughs> did, did, Michelle, do you use that for issuing speeding tickets to your uh, model railroad engineers? Okay, final question. So in Scotland, we have a, a bridge over a railroad called the Fourth Rail, uh, the Fourth Rail Bridge. Okay, and they used to say that when you'd finished painting it from one side to the other, you had to you had to start again and paint it again. So, how many hours does it take you guys to clean all that track? Oh, yeah, a lot. That's why we clean every Monday. And um, the main line, we run those alcohol cars, the, car, the tank cars that you put denatured alcohol in, and it has a little pattern underneath it. We can do that. But then the maintenance crew, they have a pretty good uh, schedule. They kind of work through the layout. And it just takes months and just go. Just like you said, once you get to the end, you just start over and do it so again. So I guess you don't manage to clean the whole thing every Monday, do you? No. Well, the, the tracks themselves, the main lines, they run the cleaning trains every morning yeah. that we're going to operate. And they run the vacuum car every Monday and pull up all the lint and stuff that's fallen on the rail. Okay. There continues to be chaos all around me. I apologize if I keep looking away from the camera. It's just to see what bit of my model railroading equipment is getting launched by the child. Um, last question is from Misty. Um, what is the longest train you've run on the layout? 183 cars. <laughs> How many? 
183 tires, 11 locomotives, and one throttle. One MC controller. Wow. And wow. we did it on a Sunday morning, not for the public, because it was kind of an experiment. But we do run extreme trains often. We'll run very, very long trains. Um, but what happens is we have six sightings, and so we have to run them one direction and then put all the little trains in the side so it can go by. We do it about four times. Wow, that's awesome. So that's all the questions. Um, yeah, it was 183, if anyone was struggling to hear what uh, Michelle said there. If you want to see it on YouTube, on Bill Rogers' YouTube page, there's that train. So. There you go, it's, it's on YouTube. Awesome. All right, well, we'll try and find uh, no one's looking at you, Gordy. That's fine, good. No one ever should look at Gordy. <laughs> But God, he's just looking at what's getting thrown out of his workshop, guys. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Tony Cook is here for his for our next uh, our next uh, clinic. So, what we'll do is we will let you sign off, Michelle. Thank you so much for taking part in this event. Um, as always, it's been fantastic. That was a great tour, a great museum, and uh, great people over there in in Greeley. So, thank you. Bye.